plugins are one of the most widely used mechanisms for distributing your custom Python code. Plugins allow you to package stuff that you want to ship to your users. And when users install that, they'll get the same code that you wrote will be running in the QGIS. So everything that we've learned in the course so far, you can say, I want, I really want to create this toolbar and have all the users have the toolbar which I coded. Or I built this script, I want to share it with, with other users who will be able to then run it on the machine. How do I share that with them? Plugins is one of the mechanisms for doing that. Let's learn some concepts around QGIS plugins, and then we'll build some plugins and we'll see how that works. So let's go through this presentation on how does QGIS plugins work. There is a lot of mystery around plugins whenever somebody is learning PyQGIS. They said, I want to learn PyQGIS because I want to build plugins. Well, that's kind of the wrong way to think about plugins. Plugins is just a way to distribute your code. So first you need to learn how to customize QGIS, how to write code that works in QGIS. You can run it on your own system using a script, but only when you want to share it with others. You say, I have run, I've written this code. I want you also to run it. Instead of sending them a file and then you know they somehow figure out how to run it, you can just say, here is a plugin, install this plugin and you'll get the script. So plugins are a way to package and distribute custom PyQGIS code. That's a way to think about that. Plugins allow you to kind of Get those customizations installed easily. Users do not really have to fiddle around with paths and open Python console. They just go and install the plugin and suddenly they get your code. And when you update some code, most of the code, if you've written any real world code, all code will have bugs. You will add some features. After a month, you say, I have a new version. Instead of you sending them a file again, you just update your plugin. They'll get a notification saying, hey, the plugin has an update. They install the update and they get new code. So it makes kind of installing updates also much easier and makes generally the experience of installing custom Python code much easier through the plugin framework. The plugins are managed by the system called Plugin Manager in QGIS. When QGIS starts, it calls the Plugin Manager. Plugin Manager goes to your system and say, I will look at this special folder that exists in your QGIS profile and go through each plugin that you have installed and run the code for initializing and loading the plugin. Each plugin folder needs to have certain files that the plugin manager will look for. And it'll go through the folder and say, this is a plugin. How do I know it's the plugin? Well, it has some files, some special files that it looks for. When the, it finds those files, it'll run the code from that file and say, this is how I initialize the plugin and add the buttons and menu items and any other stuff that you have added through the plugin. And all of the stuff happens when QG starts. The main plugin code has to be inside of a class. And that's why we have to learn how to write classes in this course. We've already used some classes. We'll write new classes that will be called by this plugin manager and that class will create your plugin instance and run it within QGIS. What can you do with plugin? Well, everything you can do with PyQGIS. The plugins have access to iFace. So you can do your iFace customization. You can add buttons, menus, etc. You can have access to all PyQGIS classes and PyQT classes. So you can create new interfaces, run processing algorithms and so on. So everything you can do with Python in QGIS, you'll be able to do this with the plugins. To have a set folder, which is recognized as a plugin, you need to have certain special files and your code has to be inside of those files and then only will be recognized as plugins. The first file you'll need is this file called metadata.txt. Every plugin needs to have this. So if you say, I've written some code, I want to now create a plugin out of it. Well, first thing you do is you create this text file. This text file just describes what's the name of the plugin, who's the author, what's the version number, and so on. It just describes some information about the plugin and every plugin needs one. The second file every plugin needs is this special file called underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore, dot py. This is a file which will be which the plugin manager will check when the QG starts and it goes to a folder. Does this folder have this init.py? If it has init.py, it says, okay, here is iFace. I've initialized QGS. You'll need iFace. So it'll send the iFace to this init.py and say, where is your class? Which is your main class that I want to create your plugin object out of it? So your plugin will be a class, and the plugin manager will say, it has to be inside of this init.py. I'll give this iFace to this class. The iFace will be used to initialize the plugin and it'll create an instance of a plugin that will run in QGIS. So all your plugin needs at least these two files 
metadata.txt describing what the plugin does, and init.py, which will just take the iface that is passed by the plugin manager and initialize your main plugin class. You can put all the other code in this init.py itself, and your plugin will work. So only two files will create a plugin. Most plugins, however, just to make it much easier to manage the things, you have init.py, which will just take the iface and initialize the class. They typically have this one file called main.py. Main.py has the main plugin class and all the other functionality. So this is where you write your code with the main plugin class, which will undo your all the initializations. And this will be called by the init.py when the plugin starts. You don't need to have this, but it's a recommended structure that most plugins sh should have at least one .py file with the main class. In the main.py, when plugin manager starts the class, it'll look for this three special methods in your class. One init, which will say, this is how I'm going to pass iface to you. Init GUI, which will be allow you to add some buttons and menu items. So if you want to change the interface, if you want to add any buttons or any menu items to the main QGIS, this is where you'll do it. Init GUI will just add those. So this is called when the plugin is initialized. So you initialize the plugin and says, here's the iface. Do all the changes to the interface that you want to do now. And that will be done before the user even sees QGIS. So when you start QGIS, it says loading plugins. That's what it's doing. It's calling this init. It's calling this init GUI. And it shows you the interface. When you close QGIS, it's also going to call this method called unload, which is going to remove all the customizations you've done. If you added some buttons or menu items, unload will remove that. So your main.py will need at least these three files. And that's it. This can create a fully functional plugin. And once you have this structure, you can now take any customizations you've done, put the code here, and they'll be run as part of your plugin. So first we'll learn how to create this structure, how to have a minimal plugin, which kind of gets recognized as a plugin, adds a button, and then you can say, now I have a way to put my Python code, we'll customize the plugin and do something useful with it. Again, there are some caveats to this. So the main.py doesn't have to be named main.py, it can be named anything. You just have to tell the init.py what your name of the main class is. So any user interface that you want to do, you have access to iface in your plugin, so you can do all your customizations there. You can also create new processing algorithms. So you want to do some scripting, write them as a processing script that'll add to your processing toolbox. You can also create custom dialog boxes. So you say, I want to create a new user interface. I will want to show dialog boxes with some tabs, etc. If you want to create more complex user interface, you can use Qt to create those. I recommend that all of you should just use, if you want simple buttons and menus and toolbars, just use PyQt and create this in your code the way we've done so far. You can just say, I want a toolbar with one button, one drop down, et cetera, you can create those. If you want to do some data processing, allow and allow user to pick your input files, configure some parameters and write some output file, use the processing API, which you're gonna learn later in the course, where you don't have to create any of this. You just specify, I want a drop down. The processing API will go and find what layers are loaded. They'll automatically load that. You'll also get all the features of the processing algorithms. You'll get a progress bar, you'll run the background, you'll get multi-threading, all of those benefits that you get with a really modern user interface. Only when this tool doesn't meet your requirement, when you're creating something really complex and you want to have more control over exactly how your interface looks, you can use this software called Qt Creator, which allows you to design your user interface, and then ha you'll have a UI file that you can call from your plugin. I find that for majority of the plugins, this too is more than enough, and this is the recommended way. If you want to go this route, do this as a last resort only when this interface doesn't meet your requirements. Once you've done your plugin, you say, I have this files I've created. How do I send it to the other users? How do I, other users use my plugin? Simplest ways, if you are built a plugin, zip it, send the zip file to your colleague, and in the plugin manager, there's a way to install a plugin through a zip file. So that'll be the easiest way for your colleague to go and install that. So they can go to your plugins, manage install plugins. There's a tab called install from zip. I want to show you where that is so you know how to do this. So if, I, if my, somebody sent me a zip file with the plugin, I can go to manage and install plugins. From my plugin manager, I have install from zip. I can browse to the zip file that somebody sent me and run this, it'll install the plugin. This is a great way to test and share this plugin with your colleagues. Very lightweight, 
very easy to share and distribute your code. So that's one way to do this. So if you have a small group of people who are using your plugin, this is the great way to do this. The downside of this is every time you want to update, you to send them a new zip file, they would again do the process. There's no automated way to push an update to somebody else. If your plugin is public, you want to share with users you don't know, or they are you know, from anywhere on the internet, you can upload the plugin to the official QGIS plugin repository. This is where most of you would have used the plugins for. Once you upload the plugin, it will be reviewed by the QGIS developer team because plugins have full access to your system. It can do a lot of malicious things. So QGIS team will review it to make sure their plugin doesn't do any nefarious things, meets the guidelines. It doesn't duplicate the functionality. So if there's a plugin that is similar to that, you don't want to have a very similar plugin in the listing available. So they'll review the plugin. Once it's done, it'll be available to all other, other users. If you installed this using the official plugin repository, every time QJ starts, it's going to check if there's a newer version of the plugin available and it'll prompt the user to install that. So updates are much easier if you install it via the official repository. If you're working for a large organization or you have stakeholders across different organizations, you say, I don't want to make it public, but I have I built a plugin that, you know, some hundred people are using it. And, but it's not public. It's for my clients, for some other stakeholders. You can set up your own plugin repository. So you can set up a server, upload your plugins there and have your users configure that. So for example, users can come, come in here and say, I want to add a third party plugin repository. So when you host your plugin somewhere internally or externally at a URL, you can send the URL to somebody. And when they configure this, they run it, they'll see your plugin there. And this works very similar to the public repository, but you control it. It's available only to the people who are authenticated to use that repository. So this works where you have users in your organizations and you want to send them plugin updates automatically. So three different ways to share your plugin. Again, from simple to more complex, and you can pick the one that suits your requirement. We're going to go and build some plugins.